Hi book lovers, I have a treat for you today. If you love pop-up books, lift the flap books, slide books, anything that's interactive and strikingly bold, then I have a treat. This is one of my favorite genres. I have so many of these books, it's insane. This is just a small selection, so let's get started. Probably one of my most beloved pop-up books is by Mo Willems. I love his work, who doesn't? And I often take this to schools to show the kids. It's just so dry and humorous, as is his way, that of course features these. <laughs> delicious froglings all the way through and of course pop outs as well really really cute and funny sometimes a little tricky to close and my favorite one is it this one it might be this one here <laughs> it just makes me laugh it's just so clever and fun and kids really respond beautifully to these who doesn't love a pop-up book another really illustrious creation the little mermaid you might have heard of robert sabuda he's a genius he really is he's done a lot of pop-up books and they're always really super magical this of course is the classic tale and it's published by simon and schuster the frog one is by walker let's have a look inside how could you not be entranced by that magical creation isn't that insanely beautiful? And what I love too is down the bottom, we have the, the little pop-ups here with some narrative alongside. Absolutely gorgeous. And look, even more. Have a look how this opens. Watch this, this little pop here. How it opens and it moves. Absolutely incredible. Let me show you one towards the end. Here we go. Have a look at this. Just extraordinary. Huh? Hi! How cool. All right. Uh, first of all, I'll just show you Castle. This one is published by Scholastic and it's by Sabuda and Reinhardt. Oh, and this one, I have to stand up. Okay. So this one, look here. Who doesn't love a peak inside a building? And I love how these are 3D. You see that? So kids can explore all the way around the castle. Here we go. So these can move with the pull tab. And then on this side as well. So the people can move. Here's another pop-up here of a knight with beautiful foiling. Look at that. Isn't that superb? Reflecting in the light. And then further pop-outs to the side. There's a knight on his horse. Gorgeous. And again, it's got that lovely 3D nature to it. Kids can explore and peek in. See if we can peek in that little window there. Just beautiful. Robert Sabuda's Christmas Alphabet, gorgeous bright green uh, foiled cover. And then what we do is we have a little bit of an exploration through the alphabet. And I actually have uh, the card set of these. I often put it on my wall and kids can go by and just open up the cards as, uh, as the season progresses. There's A for Angel. That's B for Belle. C for candle and on we go through the book let's take a look at M this is well thumbed for nutcracker that is O for ornament how delicious is this it's so old this one you can see it's got a little bit of age spotting which is terrible and it's had lots and lots of wear it's creations the night before Christmas which is one of my favorite stories of all time and this one is published by, so I should be telling you the publishers, how neglectful of me. This is Little Simon. Again, such a charming book, the way it opens up. And then we have these extra little pieces that kids can explore. Look at this one. And how the circles turn. 
as the page opens. Put another one. This one we can turn. How divine. Look. Oh, it's just pure joy. It's just such a magic to pop ups, is there not? Just such an enchanting. Match. How gorgeous. That's with his pipe, of course, and his belly jiggling like a bowl full of jelly. It's the 12 days of Christmas, another deep, deep, deep love of mine. Oh, look. I haven't opened these for quite a while. They just bring so much happiness. Let me find another one. Oh, here, look at the beautiful reindeer. These are the types of things that you need to get three copies of so when the kids are in them, have a look at this one. Look at this. You ready for this? Ready? Look at that snow globe. And the birds move as you open it. This one is called a mummy. And it's a great Halloween book. Of course, it's featuring Maurice Sendak's work and the scenario was done by Arthur Yorinx. Paper engineering was by Matthew Reinhardt and this is Michael DiCaprio Books for Scholastic. Have a little look inside. Ah, oh, so super cool. Isn't it gorgeous? So beautifully done. Little bit freaky, that looks like Frankenstein there. Mummy, little boy's looking through the book, looking for his mummy, wonder what kind of mummy he's gonna find. <laughs> and again, lots of different angles to view the illustrations. Putting the side by here. And the eyes move and the boy's hand moves. Absolutely gorgeous, slightly freaky. Just love it when things move and it's almost cinematic as we're opening the page so much more unfolds. See there? And then over here. How completely special. And look at the depth of that page. It looks like it's disappearing into the distance. There's my husband responding to my text. Mm. This is Alphabet Street. It's adorable for little kids. Absolutely gorgeous. This is published by Nosy Crow. Love Nosy Crow's work. They're a relatively new publisher. So this actually can be pulled out, you see, concertina-like. So you could create a freeze of this in the child's room or they can just unravel it and explore it flat on the floor. But it's just got lots of lovely little things to, uh, to lift and explore here. So here's an example. Coffee and donuts. D is for dog who is drying a dish. And you can lift from the side and we find a kitty cat in there cooking some fish. Uh, over here, just love exploring these things. Doesn't matter how old you are, they're still enchanting. Uh, e here. F is for frog who is fetching a suit. Really beautifully illustrated and lots of fun. And on the back, we have a gorgeously produced concertina of the town here through the park going through past the beach there isn't that just sweet as pie this is one of my favorite favorite Julia Donaldson books illustrated by Sharon King Chai this one is by Two Hoots Press if you haven't seen Two Hoots work oh you must look them up beautiful publisher and this is really really exquisitely done Hello. Look at the colour. Look at the little surprises that we find along the way. And that was just before the book even started. How divine. I dream of having a book published like this. Here is an ant. Who is prettier than an ant? A butterfly! It's such a beautifully done book because it has all these different threads through it. So not only do we get to discover visually 
bits and pieces like for example the ant here against the black background, the ant here against the flower. But we have this narrative that carries through and each of the featured animals are related in some way. So who has more legs than a butterfly? A caterpillar! And again we have these beautiful cutouts that relate to the image on the other side. This would have taken an immense amount of planning and work. It's so beautifully crafted, divine matte paper, gorgeous colour. Who is bigger than a deer? Why, an elephant. Who is pinker than an elephant? And on and on it goes. Such a beautiful, beautiful creation. It's these books I actually found when my daughter was born. So this is almost 20 years ago. This is produced by Orchard Books. They're by the incredible Jane Ray. And it's basically, uh, there's two of them. One is the Nativity and one is Noah's Ark. So they're traditional stories. But my goodness, they are so beautiful inside. Let's have a little look. Try it this way again. Superb illustrations, traditional trim here, which I don't mind. Not a real traditionalist with books, but these are just exquisitely done. So it has beautiful spreads here with the narrative running through. Superb illustrations. And then right at the back of the book, we have, first of all, a beautiful spread. Oh! Look how the drawbridge pops down. There's the arc. So it's a beautiful pop-up spread. The bunting even flutters in the breeze. And then we have a secret envelope. And inside you will see some beautiful treasures. So there we have Noah and his wife. And of course, all of the animals. Two by two, that kids can then play with, with the scene behind. It's like a built-in scene, and the kids can then pluck out these beautiful little cutouts and do some play acting of the story that they've just read. Lovely ribbon that ties the book closed. And again, a traditional beautifully illustrated story and then right at the end oh, we have the manger and again you can see different angles here and the lovely envelope here full of the Magi and and of course stable animals well here's the manger and look the manger pops out look at that See that and a little baby Jesus is there somewhere but I suspect that it might be elsewhere because my daughter was quite obsessed with the little baby and she used to pluck him out and play with him and who knows, he might be lost. Speaking of classics, we're going on a bear hunt. Michael Rosen, Helen Oxenbury, and uh, this is with Walker Books, of course. And it's the classic tale, Popped Up. How divine. Then we have a classic spread there. I love the interplay between colour and monochrome here. Then we get treated after that monochrome page to another beautiful pop-up. Look at that. Another narrative page and then we move on to whoop, a different pop-up. See the angles there? And on we go through the book with these dramatizations that kids can absolutely fall into and fall in love with. There's another classic here as well. This one is Guess How Much I Love You and that's Sam McBratney 
and Anita Jerram, published by Walker. Similar sort of uh, concept here. We have parts that move. And this is a pop. Oh, it's so cute. And then here we can open up. Look how adorable. Really, really sweet. So if you like traditional stories, these are a lovely way to elaborate on the traditional story that you might have as a regular book. There's the baby bunny hopping around. And then on this side, I haven't opened this for so very long. My goodness, look how sweet. This is more modern, How Many? This is published by Robin Corey Books which is an imprint of a random house and it's made by Ron Vandermeer who is a genius as well. I take this to schools too and just have a look. These beautiful abstract forms, kids go bananas over them. Look here and I love how this one has different cellophane pieces through it, for kids to peek through and the one at the end, I'm obsessed by this. How divine is that? And that is called How Many. Another classic Roald Dahl, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Probably like anyone my age, you're obsessed with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and anything Roald Dahl as well. The pop-up book here, of course, illustrated by Quentin Blake, and that's a puffin book. Uh, da -da! Oh, superb. And again, that lovely 3D. That lovely 3D look and then I love this it not only has pop-ups but then it has all these interactive wonderful little peaks that kids can unfold and have a look inside this these newspapers here that they can explore there's this one open yep look at that so so much fun more here of course what are we going to find inside this folder what do you think Golden ticket. Imagine how enchanting this is for little ones to open. Look how beautiful. Gorgeous scenes. Really beautifully crafted book. Okay, one for the really little ones, another alphabet book. This is called Wild Alphabet, an A to Z zoo pop-up book. And this is by Kingfisher, uh, by Mike Haynes and Julia Froelich. Alright, so here we have, it's just so beautifully crafted, this book. Antelope, I scamper across the African plains on long and slender legs. Sure, I can run fast and jump high, but I'm always on the lookout for danger. And then as we open the letter A, we get to see the antelope inside. Okay, next page. Oh, I like this. Some of them are really simple, like this is F for Flamingo, and as the child opens the book, they can see the little flamingo's head peeking there. Oh, <laughs> cute. This is H for Hippo. He's popping his head up there. P for Penguin. Has a little peek. Ooh. Uteraptor. No, I've heard of that before. And this pops up like that. How cute. Really gorgeously designed. All right, world famous book of magical numbers. Love, love, love Sarah Goodrow's work. This is by the incomparable Big Picture Press. Love their work. Let's have a look inside. So this is obviously a numbers book. One, the world famous numbers show. And then it has these lovely pop-ups that kids can explore. Beautiful illustrations and gorgeous design. Look at this. And these are lift. Lift the flap. Lovely blending of pop-up. Lift the flap and sliding. Lovely thick card for little ones so that things don't get too damaged. This one must be a pull-up, surely, surely. Oh, well, yes it is. 
by the same, uh, actually it's not the same creator, this is uh, in the series, again Big Picture Press, and this is Lee Sing and Tom Frost. Love Tom Frost's work, he's just so very clever. So this is Opposites, and of course these kinds of books are perfect for Opposites, aren't they? Welcome to the World of the Circus. Closed, what do you think the opposite might be? Open. Same. Different. Really simple, beautifully crafted. Maybe go a few and many. Wibble wobble. How superb. Look at this one at the end. Oh, down, up. If you, if you love retro illustration, illustrations, you'll go bananas over this. And of course, in and out where we want birds to be. All right, and another one, you loving this? Another one, uh, this is um, by Angela P. Arrhenius, um, please forgive me, Chronicle Books, Welcome to Main Street, Lift the Flaps. All right, beautiful, uh, just, just gorgeously designed, really, really beautiful paper. It's a very thick matte paper in this book. It's just an illustrator's treat. Look at this. Oh, it's just superb. Lovely thick matte paper. And then we can open and have a little peek inside. And there's more here. Look, tasty croissants. Here's a little menu up the top here. Oh, I just want to open. Look, peeking. What's in the bakery bag? Just lots for kids to explore. Really pretty book. Patisserie, squeak, squeak. What's that funny noise? And what is that under the baker's hat? He's always prepared. Adorable, gorgeous, beautifully designed books. Lots for kids to discover. Left. The fish market. Oh, there's a cat up there. Another cat up there. Beautiful, beautiful book. Love. David A. Carter, you might have heard of him as well. He is another supreme paper crafter. This is by Tate. And uh, yeah, again, super modern, super, super quirky. Love the foil cover. Look at this. Really dynamic. Lots of fun. Gorgeous, gorgeous book, very modern. This is Cars, a pop-up book of automobiles, another paper crafter, Robert Crowther, brilliant. And this is Walker Books. So your car aficionados will go bonkers over this. And what I love about this book is that it is actually quite sophisticated in terms of its text. So it follows uh, the history of cars. So it's starting out from early cars through supercars, uh, everyday cars has quite a lot of dec a decent amount of text and then it has those little extras that kids love to explore so for example here we can see this uh, Railton mobile special zooming across the landscape and it has more information as we pull out that little tab here again more and then at the bottom it discusses future cars is that going to lift? Yep. Lifts up there. Oh, that looks intriguing. So, yeah, for kids who are obsessed with cars, lots to explore. Oh, this is a pullout. How oh, cool. And that one is a, oh, that's a pullout as well. Pops up. More Mercedes. Supercars. I mean, just, just a heap, a heap of fun for kids that love cars and uh, for that slightly older reader. Another one, a paper engineering masterclass. This is with practice pop-ups and four ready-to-assemble masterpieces. This is Walker Books again. Uh, Ruth Wickings is the paper engineer and it's illustrated by Frances Castle. Let's have a little look inside. So this is brilliant for kids who want to explore 
pop-ups and how to create their own. Of course we can do really simple ones but this is a little bit more sophisticated. So it shows the different types of techniques that paper crafters use, angle folds, parallel folds and some extra mechanics like spirals and elastic bands that pull things back. Oh, how joyful. Look here. That's a robot. It's created with a combination of angle and parallel folds. So it's showing how the robot was actually constructed. Look at that dragon. Maze balls. Yeah, so this is this is a, a like a book that kids can enjoy and marvel at, but it's also inspiring and instruct and, and an instruction for them to complete their own pop-up books. Right, this one is one of my favourite books of all time. I don't know what it is about the periodic table. I have an obsession. It's a weird one, but there you go. This is an Osborne book. And let me find the creators. Illustrated by Shaw Nelson, written by Alice James, designed by Emily Barden. Beautiful job, Emily. It's just superb. The colours are divine. This is an absolute joy to work through. What is the periodic table? And then it features all of these lovely little bits and pieces that kids can open to learn more about each of the elements featured. It's so accessible. It's such a complex and sophisticated topic and this book makes it enormously uh, accessible to kids. Look here. Outlines the table. Lots of little things for kids to explore. I love how the different elements, different types of elements are colour coded and kids can open to explore more about them. Absolutely beautiful. Look here. Look, each one opens up and I believe this tells kids who actually in, uh, came up with these elements or discovered them for the periodic table. Gorgeously designed and illustrated. Highly, highly recommend. Teachers, you would go bananas over this book. There's just one, uh, actually two more I want to show you, but before I do, uh, these ones are from my baby baby board book video, I think, if you want to check out check them out more. But Under the Ocean is just beyond, beyond exquisite. It shows above and below the water. In the Forest is, again, super, super divine, has eco ecological themes. Superb, superb. Carnival Animal. Look, look how superbly done pop-ups and of course kids can create different animals by changing the bodies, heads and tails here. Look. Oh, this is, uh, this is pretty full on, isn't it? They're just so tactile and you just have to move with them and uh, things drop on the floor as a consequence. Okay, second last book. This is Flipper Storic. This one is extraordinary. It's published by Abbeville Kids and the creator is Sarah Ball and it's one of those wonderful flip books that we used to love as children as well. And kids can basically create their own creations. And I love how they've included the actual, uh, they've included text at the top so that children can come up with a creature with an actual specific name. How beautiful is this? It's just really gorgeously done. I love, 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 love this book. And I believe there's a dinosaur one as well. And this one features real and prehistoric animals to make a thousand different creatures, crazy creatures, divine. When we, uh, oh gosh, it was nearly 10 years ago, we took the kids to Europe when they were a little bit young and uh, we visited um, the Netherlands for the first time. It's really hard traveling when you've got a book obsession because then you have to put them in a suitcase and my gosh, it gets heavy. <laughs> we ended up having to send some books home. I bought a lot of French books and I bought some books from the Netherlands and this is one of them. So this is Heidi Klein Theater and I believe in English it's the Theater of Rebecca, Van Rebecca. It is published by David's Franz. And the creator is Rebecca Dotremer. It's just extraordinary. It's really the most extraordinary book. You can see how thick it is. So exquisitely crafted. As we open, 
we start with a paper cut title. And the book unfolds like a theatre. And you can see all the way through, it's probably a bit hard to see, that each page contributes to the visual. Isn't it divine? All of these laser cut images create this narrative. And if I just show you, it is so thick, I don't know how many pages, a lot. Look at the scenes here, you can enjoy. I'll lay it down a bit so you can sort of see as I flick. It's so hard to show you, my apologies. But just exquisitely crafted, the scene just, just build and build and build and build until we get to the front of the book again. You might be able to find this on Book Depository. Uh, I think there might be an English language version, not that you need it because it's wordless anyway, but really one of my great, great treasures, this book. I simply, simply adore it. But I think that's enough. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, really inspiring, these books. And uh, if you loved any of those, do check them out. And uh, like and subscribe, please, so I can continue on. I will have some more books for you again soon. I have lots of different themes in mind and there's actually some books that are stuck underneath a few shelves and I'm going to try to get in there and find those treasures because it's been a while since I've accessed them. So I'll be back with some more soon. Hope you're all doing well and I'll see you soon. Bye.